today is a very simple thing. Uh, I touched upon it in my last um, uh, class, and I called that the old, about the value of old school problems. And this I'm calling the 369 method. And this was actually something that my coach created kind of to help me, but I think is a very universal thing. And that is, he felt that my thinking over the board was not as focused as it could be, and that I needed to structure my thinking and not think forever in particular. And the unstructured thinking kind of led me into situations where I was thinking forever. And then a crime that happens, and I'm sure everybody out there has had this happen to them, is you start spinning your wheels and then your clock runs down and then it's the clock that's ultimately the big problem. Uh, that's where you're going to get in big trouble later in the game. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do, this is the way the game's going to work. I'm going to uh, show a position, okay? And the, what 369 means is that at three minutes, six minutes, and nine minutes, what I want you to do is write down in chat what your opinion is. Now, this opinion might be, uh, will be addressed to the question. Often the question will take the form of who is better and why and what should they do, okay? And in general, the person, uh, let's say if it's black to move, I'll put black at the bottom. You know, who's ever at the bottom will be to move. Um, now, before we start, the first one you might find confusing. You could consider it a test run. Um, but the very simple is I want you to try to structure your thoughts so that you do have an answer at three minutes, that you do have another answer at six minutes, and that your final answer will come at nine minutes. If imagine you're playing a game, game 90 plus 30, something like that. Nine minutes is really the upper limit of time that you have to make any one given move. These positions, please don't think of them as uh, like tactical problems. Think of them as just game positions. Tactics are always involved, but also posi positional considerations. You're probably trained to do tactics such as white to play and win. That's not what we're doing. We are truly trying to find the best move in situations, uh, in the situations I'm gonna give you. Now, one more thing I wanna say about my current self is I'm a little sick today, and I'm hoping that that will prevent me from speaking. Okay, I'm hoping that my sickness will enable this exercise to you know, go to its fullest, which is when you're thinking, I should shut up for the most part. It's very hard for me to shut up. And then I will call time at three minutes, six minutes, nine minutes. I really want you to try to write down in the chat what, um, what your answers are, okay? So again, we're about to start. I'm gonna show a position. And then at three minutes, I'm gonna say three minutes, at six minutes, I'm gonna say six minutes. And at nine minutes, I'm gonna say nine minutes. And then when that happens, I just want you to write your answer. It doesn't have to be correct. It doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, and then after all that was gone, was done, after the nine minutes over, we'll talk about it. I'll invite people to chat, say their opinion about the position. There might be more than one right answer. And, um, you know, might be some interesting positions as well. Okay, so here we go. This is gonna be a simple question, all right? And it's gonna be, um, should white take on E5? All right, so I'm gonna give a little arrow. Should white take on E5? And I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of a grace period. I'm gonna call this, we're starting at eight, at 8.06, eight o'clock Eastern time that is, so six past the hour. Maybe I'll just say six just right now. So you have three minutes to consider knight takes E5. And then I would like you to reconsider uh, if you feel like you have the answer, okay? And you have the full nine minutes. We don't even see the position right now. Oh, how is that? See, oh, you guys, thank you so much. See, this is why, this is why I'm not, this is why I'm not an expert. <laughs> I thought I had everything under control, but I can do this. I can do this. Thank you very much for saying that. That was a terrible thing. All right, let's start this again. Do you guys see the position now? 
Okay, great. So we're going to start it from here. Let's call it seven minutes past the hour. Thank you again for fixing my uh, little situation there. Okay. Should white play knight takes e5? Give yourself the full three minutes before you answer. You still got some time. Again, does knight takes e5 work? In just a second, I'm going to ask for your three-minute answers. Okay, time. Put in your answers. Three minutes. Should white play knight take c5? Right, and I guess we'll say something obvious. The answers should be to me, at least in the Zoom call, they should be to me directly. We're doing a lot of complicated technological stuff. Some people have just joined us. The question is, knight takes e5. Should you do it? You're a little late, but you still have some time. You have about five and a half minutes left. At every, at every three minutes, six minutes, and nine minutes, I require an answer. This is designed to force your thinking to be concise.
Okay, time, six minutes. Please write your answers in a direct message to me in the chat. And then give yourself a moment now to reconsider whatever opinion you had. Uh, reconsider the knight takes e5. I'll give, an, and I don't want to give a lot of speeches, but my little speeches here, uh, finding the details here in positions like this is how games are won and lost. I have a little bit of time, about 40 more seconds, till you have to produce your final answer. It's just like a real game. You don't have any, you don't have unlimited time. Okay, so we'll call it there, and please put in your answer. Okay, good, we're getting some nice answers. Please force yourself, force yourself to give an answer. It doesn't, have, it doesn't matter if you're right or wrong. In a, in a game, you're gonna be forced as well, and you're gonna make mistakes as well. There's just no way around it. But the point of the exercise is just to force yourself to do it. And then when we think about it later, we're going to talk about the answer. And maybe you'll get a sense of how others saw it and maybe how to structure your thinking here. Okay, so what I'd first like to do is, does somebody out there in Zoom land feel strongly about their answer and would like to talk about it? All right, Zephyr, uh, let's see here. I want to come on and tell us your opinion here. So I don't think you should take on E5. Okay. And if you take on E5, mm -hmm. um, I think there is rook H4. Okay. And after like queen F7 check, for example, mm -hmm. queen takes F7, knight mm -hmm. takes F7, bishop takes H2, and if king f if king h1 then bishop f4 check and bishop e3 uh -huh. and if king f2 then rook f4 check so you're saying white shouldn't play knight takes e5 yes oh okay okay fair enough all right let me put the pieces back 
and then we'll get somebody else on. Would anybody else? Oh, oh, I did a bad thing. I'll tell you guys why. <laughs> this will be a test of how good I remember the position. <laughs> oh, chess.com, you make it so hard for me sometimes. Uh -huh. Okay, but wait. This is a good opportunity. I can chat through a little bit what we're doing. And uh, it'll be useful that way just to talk for a second. And you guys can get ready to explain your thinking. I hit an X. I hit an X marks the spot when I should have hit, shouldn't have. Um, and again, some of you might have joined a little late. Let me explain what we're doing. This is called the 369 method. I coined it as a method. Is it a real method? I kind of like to think so. Um, and this was developed though by my coach to help me be a little bit more structured in my calculation and in particular the time that I was using on the clock. Because I was just tanking on the clock, you know, like a lot of other players do. I see it in a lot of my students as well, they tank. All right, I believe I have it set up correct. And Rio would like to go, let's bring him up. I think he actually has the correct answer, so he might be able to tell us. All right, Rio, tell us what you got. Uh, so I'm going to go with um, knight takes e5. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously he has to play rook h4. Okay. Okay. Uh, now, now, now we play queen g6 instead of, uh, I believe, uh, what, what did the other? Uh, well, the, oh, lot she, of, she, lot she said. Uh, go, go ahead. He or she. I, the last person said uh, queen f7, mm -hmm. and that doesn't work. But we have queen g6, and the idea is after you take my knight, I play g3, and you're a rook strapped. Very good, very good. It's a very nice rook trap, and that is simply the key variation that you gotta see. And I'm gonna go back a little bit and talk about the initial position. So, <clears throat> oh, it's being a jerk again. Chess.com, buddy, buddy, chess.com, don't do this to me. I'm trying to put up on on e5, there we go. So a lot of people actually sent me direct messages with a very thoughtful, uh, reason why they should not take e5. Namely, hey, that bishop is terrible, and why would I take on e5? Because A, it increases the tactical volatility of the situation to take on e5, and B, that bishop's so terrible. Now, I have a lot of sympathy. I have a lot of sympathy with that opinion, and in a practical game, I'm just gonna admit it would be hard for me to even consider knight takes e5. But this is precisely where I think I and a lot of people would uh, really improve by considering moves like knight takes e5 because it becomes very concrete. If the guy does not have anything special, we have simply won a big fat pawn and our knight is even more beautiful. And if he takes, it's not just that we won the pawn, but his king is king and pawns are permanently damaged. I think a winning position. Now, let's imagine you didn't try to win the pawn and played knight d2 or something. Would you be better? Yeah, you'd be better, but your position is no longer so special. And you risk even losing later if he manages to open the position up somehow, as, as happens, as happens in our experience, right? Okay, so good. We're gonna move on to now problem number two. If you just joined us and think, oh, this is hard, this is a weird thing Jit Cry is doing, let me just reiterate, it's very simple. You give your answer at three minutes, at six minutes, and nine minutes. And for the people on the Zoom call, please write your answer in a direct message to me, and that way no one else can see it. And then we'll talk about the problem after. All right, ready, Freddy, go. White to move.
The point of the 369 is not that you have a different solution every time. The point is that you try to improve your thinking after three minutes, six minutes, and nine minutes, but that you force yourself to say out loud what your answer is at three six, and six in addition to nine, to be clear and to have that as a metronome in your mind about what is going on in the position. Just white to move. What should white do? These are not like white necessarily white to move and win or anything like that. This is just positions taken from games. Doesn't mean you might even be still worse, but if you're still trying to find the best move in the evaluation. All right, we're coming up on three minutes. All right, so please put your three minute answer into the chat. All right, we have about 30 seconds until the six minute answer. Please put in your six minute answer.
As we're coming up on six minutes, I just want to give a little speech that my ornery Russian Soviet coach gave me in a, that I think really applies to analyses of positions like this. A lot of times you'll fixate on a move and you'll try to spend all your time trying to justify that move. You know, the same way people have opinions about politics or whatever, and they spin their wheels over and over, uh, you know, trying to prove their opinion. And sometimes they're right, and sometimes it's fun to try to prove your opinion. But uh, what you want to do is really try to open your eyes about what's going on, especially in a position like this, where clearly the game, there's going to be a, <laughs> some decisive moves played by both sides in a position like this. And that's when you really want to you know, give yourself a little bit of extra, a little bit of extra time. Give yourself the nine minutes to get there. All right, that's the speech. Six minute is coming up. Okay, good. Please put in your six minute answers. I wonder if I got my timing all mixed up, huh? <laughs> I did get the timing all mixed up. I'm sorry about that. All right, I'll give, I'll give another minute here and then we'll call it. I gave extra time. Prepare your final answers. Very difficult position. Definitely in a real game, you can imagine spending even more than nine minutes here. But you'd have, you'd have to have some ideas to work out in order to get, to get there. All right, please put in your final answers and then we'll talk about it a little bit. Well, anybody, anybody who feels strongly about it, let me know. We'll, we'll chat about what you see in the position. Who has strong feelings about this? One thing I'll say about a position like this is a lot of times we use the word calculate, you know, and it sounds kind of like you're being this brutal computational machine. And in a position like this, really, you're not necessarily wanting to look at everything, you know? You really are trying to focus in on mate. So I think one of the interesting things is and I saw this in the, um, both the Zoom and the Twitch stream chat, is that people who got the right move got it kind of quickly, actually. And those that didn't, didn't, and didn't see it at all. So, uh, let's see. Did, would anyone, there was like several correct answers in here. Would anyone like in the chat to explain? In the Zoom, the Zoom chat. Okay. Well, so the answer is very nice, very simple. If you saw it, probably it all made sense quickly. Knight takes c6. It's a major bummer. 
uh, because if knight takes, we have king d2. Excuse me. If knight takes bishop, we have king d2. And on knight takes e6, we have knight d5, and the game's over. There's only one defender of the black king. It's the knight. And that's it. That's it. And it's the most terrible thing possible you can imagine. If you did um, something like this, too, another bummer for him is, like, you can't even really do this move because your rook's hanging. You know, everything's hanging. So it's just time to resign. I think knight d5 probably also went. Okay, good. So we're going to move on to the next problem. Again, it's not a computation in the sense of a computer. You're looking at everything. You're looking at how do I get rid of dude here? Dude has to go. And once you have that in your head, you'll be like, oh, maybe then you'll find I take C6, right? Okay. Okay, here we go. Next one. And chess.com, I think, is going to force me to flip the board because it never stays flipped. So again, it's going to be three minutes, six minutes, and nine minutes. Not every problem is tactical. Not everyone is white to move or black to move and win. It's a simply a game situation, just like you have, will have in your own games. Here we go. And I do have to flip it. This is black to move. And we're calling it at 35.30. So... Oh, gosh. And there's three moves that I want you to consider, not uh, all of them. Should we play f6, f5, or bishop f5? Those are our options. F6, F5, or Bishop F5? All right, we're coming up on three minutes. All right, we're at three minutes. Put in your answer in the chat. I've seen this game from like Malik's video or something. Okay.
For those of you just joining us, what's going on is we're doing a thing called the 369 method. And I show a position. We're now at about minute oh four or so into this. And the idea is that you have to give your opinion at three minutes, six minutes, and nine minutes. And the intention is to force yourself to think in a structured way about what's going on without being wishy-washy or dilly-dally in your thoughts. All right, we're coming up on six minutes. Get ready to submit your answer. Okay, six minutes. Please submit your answer. And if you've, one of the things I really want you, encourage you to do is I'm sure there are many out, you, out there who feel secure in the truth of whatever it is they've got. And I just want you to say, to say that this is your opportunity, this next three minutes, to reflect on what's going on. And a good way to do that is just imagine what your opponent would do after whatever move it is that you've put out there. All right, you have about one minute left for your final answer.
Okay, please write your final answer in the chat. Okay, good. I just want to say I really enjoy this uh, position, and I know that I wouldn't uh, always get it right. I think it's a one where you need some, yeah, some real depth. So what I'd like to do is, would somebody like to come in from the class and say what their feelings about what, what is the correct move and why? Yeah, does anyone like to come on? Share their thoughts. Sometimes here at the US Chess School, we have a reticent crowd. You know, it's kind of, as, as a coach, it's a little bit of a bummer. <laughs> All right, people are, maybe this one scares people too. Um, all right, so let me, I'll break it down in my own words. I'm happy to, <laughs> happy to. It's a delicious position. <clears throat> okay. Can I? Yo, oh, please, please, yeah. Oh, uh, I, I was thinking F6 is the move. Okay. Because um, F5, just doesn't make sense. Why are you creating a hole on the E file? And um, F six, it also it also threatens the center in a way. Okay. Like after you castle, he has no counterplay in the center. Uh huh. And yeah, you have equal play, and this is basically an equal position. You might even have some play of your own on the queen. Okay. Good. Good. All right. Great. Does anyone else want to come in? Anyone else want to give their opinion? Especially one that is an F6, if somebody has a different one. Maybe Eric Liu would come on and share his thoughts. Okay, so I thought bishop to F5, because mm -hmm. I felt like F6 threatens nothing, mm -hmm. and I don't think we have any center pressure because uh, because anytime we take on e5, he just has a pass pawn after f takes. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so bishop f5 is a developing move. And if he tries to get his knight to d4, then I will go queen to d7. OK, very good. Roger, please, come on. I think that f5 is the best move because First of all, I believe that a move like bishop f5 mm -hmm. would run into, g uh, it could be g4, bishop takes g4, f5, and mm -hmm. and bl white gets a really strong attack. White's threatening to go f6 next move. If bishop h3, then rook f3. Uh, if, but if you play, but if I play f6, then I don't really see how... Uh, you were going to start the counter attack, and and I also don't understand why. I think Black would, I mean, White would just play f5, and so although uh, the move f5 it seems to weaken the bishop, but it closes all, uh, shuts down all of White's kingside play. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like for example, if you play g4, I can just ignore you. Okay. Black can play bishop e6, and uh, and then threaten to play c5. Okay, good, good. So great, I'm really happy with those responses. We had the perspective of three people, different opinions. And I'll say, I, you did this on, on the Twitch, I did a little poll, and it was basically no one said F6. I think some people in the chat came around to F6 a little later. Okay, so let's talk about it. Uh, very, let's, first, let me just describe the dynamics. I always think it's good to just start your thinking with just like asking yourself what's going on. Okay, so this is the basic way I would say it, is that from White's perspective, let's flip the board for a second. From White's perspective, I would say we're up to Tempe because we've got one extra piece developed and we're castled, okay? So we got two extra Tempe. The problems that we have though as White is that Black has the bishop pair, number one, and number two, our knight is cruelly dominated by these pawns. We have a bad knight. So black has some interesting pluses in the position. All right, let's go back. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. So 
Um, <clears throat> the first thing to observe is that if White is going to get something out of this position, he needs to he needs to start a fire now. You know, he needs to start a fire now, and he gets to start that fire after Bishop f5, and Roger correctly said g4. At this point, uh, White will achieve uh, his attack. Whether you play Bishop c2 f5 or you play Bishop g4 f5, White has got his attack, and it is it is very dangerous for Black. Okay, so bishop f5 is then out, and I assume a lot of people saw that. So then f5, and I can imagine myself making this move. It's, it's actually a bad move. And let me just say, and especially in the heat of battle, right, and you're just trying to stop what your opponent's doing and you're scared. I'm speaking for myself here. I know I've been in these situations, and you're just like, okay, f5 is going to stop his, his garbage on the king side, right? Now, the, the little tingling sensation in the back of your mind should be, well, what about my bishops? You know, what about my poor bishops? And this is what actually was played in a high-level GM game from back, I think, 1970s. And then white played a5, good move, castles, b4, bishop e6, knight a4. And now white is better because he's got a great grip on the blockade squares, and our bishop on e6, this is, sorry, <laughs> our bishop on e6 is simply a poor piece. So I would say, you know, you gotta say either white's a little bit better or clearly better in this position. All right, so let's go back. Um, so not a losing move to play um, f5, but f6, far more interesting and what I want to say about this move, one of the reasons I love it, is it's essentially a prophylactic move, which and by, that, by that I just mean it's making f5 to be ineffectual. Because whenever you play f5, then I'll take. So for example, f5, snip, snip, castles, and I've got all the advantages in the position. Uh, and remember, this knight, knight on c3 continues to be bad. I've opened the position, and if I need to, I can play bishop f6 or bishop d6 next move. So a very elegant positional example, I feel. And again, one that I'm not sure I would always get right. It would have to be, I mean, that's real class to play f6, especially in a game situation. You know, and as, as stated, f5 was the game, was the move played in, in the original game which was, I think, a, I think I remember as a strong, strong GM. Okay, good. So let's do, try to get one more in here. Actually, I'll tell you who that was. Yeah, this was Kavalek. Actually, Kavalek, Lubomir Kavalek, is a very interesting GM, ended up coming to the United States to live, was a columnist, one of the great Czech players, basically an American player for most of his life. Died recently, I think of COVID, last year. Okay, so... Let's do, let's do another one. We might go a little bit over our hour limit, but that's okay. So I'm gonna flip the board. And this is black to play. All right, and let's start it here. We're gonna say at 53 minutes past the hour. All right. Very difficult. And the question is simply, uh, black is winning, equal, or better? Okay, and of course we want you to have a move for black as well.
<clears throat> okay, here it is, three minutes. Please write down your three minute answer. Uh, when I say three minute answer, that is both the move that you think is correct and the evaluation. And you know, just force yourself to say it and then move on and you could reconsider for your six minute evaluation. All right, you have about 30 seconds until the six minute warning, the bell. Please try to say what you think Black's best move is and the evaluation of the position. Okay, please put in your six minute answer. And then my speech is give yourself time to reflect on what's going on. It's a very hairy position, a lot of variations. And yeah, try to be as clear as possible. Reconsider your past assumptions.
right, you have about one minute until the, f the answer and the final, this will be our final problem position of the day. All right, please put in your final answers. And then if you wish to speak about it, I'll call you in and we will chat about what you see is happening and your evaluation. Would anyone like to say their opinion here? People are a little reticent, a little reticent. <laughs> a lot of different answers. Can I, can please. I say mine? Please, go ahead. Um, I was thinking about book to D1 check. Mm -hmm. okay. If he goes king to H2, I was actually thinking about the move F5. F5. But, okay. then, but then the bishop comes in. But to e6 after bishop g7. And also maybe rook takes g7 might also be scary. But right? rook g7, I was thinking about knight to d4. Okay, it's a thought. Uh huh. Uh, which blocks the bishop's diagonal of protecting the rook and you attack the knight still. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what is your sense in that position? Uh, what? what? What is your sense of the evaluation of that position? Uh, after rook g7, I think that, I think that it's, I think that it's equal to black is better. And what do you think about rook d1, king h2, f5, bishop g7? What do you think uh, about that position? Yeah, that, that is, that is something which I missed. Uh, because the scary thing there too is like we got to say these these bishops are scary. They're coming in because it's check and then mate. Oh no. Very yeah. scary business. Very scary business. So I think knight d4, actually. So Instead of f5, knight d4. Okay. Be. No, that's an interesting thought. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, all right. Let me pull some other people in. And uh, anybody else like to go? Roger, you want to come in here? Uh, I could say that I'm not really sure because okay. I think that F5, I said that I think it's forced, uh, uh -huh. but so after Bishop takes D4, right, uh, mm -hmm. then I think if you take out with the Knight, then White plays like Rook H4, uh, F takes E4, Rook takes E4, mm -hmm. let's say Rook D8, mm -hmm. uh, and then bishop e6, and I think that white's position is uh, more active, and the bishop is better than the knight. Uh, okay. And so I think... So you'd say in but, that final uh, position, white's better? Yeah, but if you okay. play f5, uh, but if I play f5, then bishop takes d4, I would take on g4. Uh, mm -hmm. Then white is pretty much forced to play... Bishop c3. Okay, good. And in order to stop, um, in order to avoid losing the piece, I think you need to play rook d8. Uh, and then after bishop e6, gh3, gh3, uh, I think it's around equal. Okay, good. That was a very considered opinion. Okay, good. Um, yeah, this one's a good one. All right, so... Um, 
Let me just say, one of the things I like about this, these problems is, you know, this is complicated. And this is the way, to me, my experience of chess is it's not usually some, you know, black to move and win situation. Because you don't even know if it's, to, maybe it's to win, maybe it's to draw, maybe it's just to get a slightly worse position. We don't know. Okay. So, um, this one I want to say, you really have to dig deep and think about what's going on in a very concrete way way. And one of the things that's interesting to me about what Roger said is a lot of just evaluation factors. Now, um, I think rook d1, king h2 is going to lose. And one of the things I want you to see is just the bishops are too strong at that point. You know, they are just way too strong. For example, rook d1, king h2, knight d4. And now we have at least well, two moves with the knight that looks scary. Knight g5, knight c5. It looks terrible. You know, it really looks terrible. We're hitting this, this poor knight. And the pieces, especially the bishops, just need a little bit of looseness to open up in white and black's camp for him to be much, much better. Now, one of the things I will say of as a prejudice I had in this position was I love these positions where you give a rook for two pieces and a pawn in the later phases of the game. But it's got to be said that the bishops, oh man, <laughs> they're their own beast. They're their own beast and we got to be really careful. So Roger is correct that we can't play something like rook d1. We got to play f5. And then on bishop d4, uh, I think he's wrong about the assessment, okay? Because on fg, the bishops are too strong. They're just way too strong. And um, the king will continue to be under attack, the black king. Yeah, it's a good example because I think if like, let's say the bishop on c3 were a knight, well then I would really believe in black's position. But that bishop on c3 is just too much. It's too much. So the correct answer is to say uh, bishop, well, let's put it back here. So f5 on the first move, bishop d4, knight d4, rook h4, exactly as Roger said. So Roger got the variation correct. And now g6. And the only thing I think that black needs to calculate is just that um, the, the rook, white's rook, can't get into e7. I think that's the only real threat we have. Otherwise, we're going to be gaining time quickly, and the white king is a little bit out. Our knight is beautiful. So we might want to calculate this. But there's no rook e7 here because of knight f5. Right? So here we're doing fine. So, uh, yeah, a very interesting problem. And, I, you know, a problem like this, I think whether you're a super GM or whatever, you're going to have to really think hard um, and do what uh, the psychologists call level two thinking, right? And go deep, uh, you know, really calculating. You're going to have to, it's not going to be just an intuitive call, right? It's not going to be an intuitive call. Okay, you guys, thank you so much. I'll be back whenever Greg lets me back. Who knows? Maybe he'll shut me down after this. But <laughs> it's been a joy, and thank you all so much for being here. Bye-bye.